everyone. This is Prati from Indonesia Bitcoin Conference. Welcome back to the third session from day, day two. This is uh, the session of on the ground, uh, um, building Bitcoin ecosystem and community in emer emerging markets, emerging countries. So here with us right now, we have Iman Yuda from Kryptonian Indonesia. And also we have Herman Fifier from Bitcoin Ecosy. And then we have Lucas from Global BTC Fest. And the last but not least, uh, we have Mike Peterson from Bitcoin Pitch. So I think uh, we are so happy because we can um, meet a lot of community builder, especially the one who are uh, working so hard uh, to build Bitcoin community and educating a lot of people uh, from any backgrounds to know more about uh, the truth behind the fiat standard and the truth behind the Bitcoin itself. So uh, without further ado, let me ask everyone here, and I'm so happy to introduce I think we, we we can ask them to introduce themselves uh, first. So let me start with uh, Herman Vivier. Hi, Herman. Herman, before you, before you go ahead, sorry, sorry, Pretty. Hey. Can you hear me? I am here. Yes. Um, okay. I am very... <laughs> you, were, you were doing okay. such a wonderful job, though, that I didn't want to interrupt. I was like, wow, this is how you moderate panels. You know, this is this is how you do it. I should have been should have been taking notes there. No, Thank you so much, so. Pateri, for <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> please take this uh, like a rehearsal. So welcome to Hall from Coin Telegraph with us. So, so with this, uh, let's open the session right now. So have fun, let's, guys. Let's See you later. <laughs> Thanks so much, Pateri. Um, hi, guys. Very happy to talk to you all this morning. As you can probably hear from my voice, it's uh, 6 a.m. in Switzerland where we just headed to Plan B Lugano conference. And I was actually hoping to bring some of the um, experience here to this chat today, as while you guys are building up uh, communities in emerging markets, uh, there are also these communities being built up in some of the highest developed markets around the world. Before we get into the conversation though, my name is Joe Hall, I'm gonna be your moderator. I'm gonna do my best to keep this lively, as I know that these Zoom talks can sometimes be a bit, you know, lower energy. So we're gonna try and, you know, keep things, <laughs> Um, interesting for those people all around the world. Um, Herman, let's start with you. How are things at Bitcoin Akazi? Could you quickly introduce yourself and just explain why you do what you do? Uh, yeah, good morning. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity. Uh, my name is Herman. I'm the founder and the chairman of Bitcoin Akazi. And um, uh, to put things in a nutshell, uh, we're basically trying to um, emulate what uh, what Bitcoin Beach did in El Salvador. It's a fascinating project that inspired me to try and do something similar. Um, and the reason I'm doing it, it's I mean, there's 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 two main reasons. I've I've been heavily invested in the community that we are working in for many years, and I saw Bitcoin as an extra extra tool, a very powerful tool that I can use to help that community. And secondly. Um, I really wanted to try and do something to contribute to the adoption of Bitcoin on a wider scale. Um, and, you know, I can't code, I can't, I'm not a developer, but, but building, a, building a community is something I can do and have been doing for, for a long time. So, you know, I figured to build, a, build something where it, it's a practical demonstration of how Bitcoin can function in a, a place where you might not expect it to function well, um, that would help to to demonstrate why Bitcoin should be and can be adopted. Fantastic. And it literally is a Bitcoin beach, right? You know, you are on a beach in Mosul Bay in South Africa. Why don't you give viewers a sense of what that feels like? What's it like? Um, yeah, it's, 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 it is very close to a beach. We use surfing as a um, as, as a tool, uh, we have been using that for many years. It's the, the effort is based around an organization that teaches kids from a very poor area how to surf. Um, and we've been trying to do that to, just to keep the kids off the streets. Um, and it, it, it feels, you know, there's, it, it feels like there's a big change that's happened um, compared to previous years. I've, I've been running this organization for, for more than a decade and it's been it's been slow, um, you know, it's been very slow since we incorporated Bitcoin. It's, it's, it added a lot of excitement, uh, a hell of a lot of excitement um, uh, to, to the project. Um, so much so that I'm, I'm not always, I'm not always keeping up. 
Um, so it's been really exciting. It's been a very exciting year and a half. Um, and yeah, just really excited to be involved in the Bitcoin space in a more meaningful way than before. I bet, I bet. I mean, I know personally that I now have South Africa, you know, Bitcoin and Kazi on my sort of world travel map for, you know, Bitcoin pilgrimages around the world. And there are plenty of us like me. Um, why don't we jump to Mike now, you know, the original Bitcoin Beach. Uh, a brief introduction. Um, why did you do what you do? Yeah, good to see you, Joe. I was just thinking the last time I saw you was at the, the Surfing Bitcoin conference there in, uh, in France. So <laughs> what a time, I, eh? What I, a time. Frankly, I'm wearing my shirt I uh, picked up there. That's, I don't know if you can see that there. I got it. Oh, no got way. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's funny. I didn't even realize you were the moderator of this panel. So that's, that's funny. Apparently, I didn't uh, realize until five minutes ago. So don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is Mike Peterson. I'm the director of the Bitcoin Beach Project here in El Zante, El Salvador. And really, we, um, the, the kids in the community project came first in what we were doing. We were already working with the youth, specifically uh, trying to keep them out of gangs. There's a lot of... Um, you know, there's historically been a, a, a big gang problem in El Salvador. And so the youth are drawn into that. And a lot of them see that as their only alternative. And so we, as we started to get into this, we saw that there was financial strings kind of attached to all these different problems that we were seeing in El Salvador. The reason that so many people were leaving and going to um, immigrating to the U.S., leaving their families was because of the lack of jobs, because there was not investment in El Salvador. The way the financial system is set up in the world, it's really rigged against smaller countries. And so we saw that even as we were trying to bring um, funds in to fund different things in the community, it was we'd have these huge challenges just to get money from the US to here to buy a vehicle. And we started thinking, why don't we just use Bitcoin for this? And mm. so that was kind of how it initially started. And then somebody offered to donate some Bitcoin to fund a number of things that we were doing with the stipulation that we had to use Bitcoin in real, um, like as it was meant to be, to be, to mm. circulate, to create a circular economy. And that started right before COVID. And the idea initially was, hey, will this be the small thing? We'll start paying the youth in Bitcoin. Uh, this will help them start understanding what money really is, help them think longer term, have a longer time horizon. But we really underestimated how it would impact all of their psyche once they started earning Bitcoin and watching the price fluctuations, starting to do their own research online. For the first time, they started thinking, where do I want to be 10 years from now? Do I want to spend this money now or do I want to save it for when I think it's going to be worth 10, 20, 100x what it is? And that yeah. even spilled over into education when they started thinking, okay, I can leave school and start working and earning a wage now, or I can sacrifice those immediate wages and get a better education so I can earn more in the future. And so we really started seeing uh, Bitcoin affect just the way people thought in general. And so there was kind of the the two sides of it. There was the practical side that for the first time they could use electronic payments. They could zip money around, you know, across the country, uh, internationally receiving remittances from family members in the U.S. But also on the other side, it actually impacted the way they thought about everything in life and gave them uh, a, a shift of their, their time preference from wanting something that was immediate to being willing to sacrifice for something longer term. And so that is where we've really seen the, the biggest impact is how it um, connects people to the, the world and opens opportunities, but also encourages them to have lower time preference. Wow, I mean, it really sounds like you've allowed the kids to dream. Whereas, you know, prior to this, they were just thinking about the next few days or maybe next few weeks. And now they can think, okay, what are my aspirations here? What can I achieve with my life with this with this new money? It's uh, I mean I can't wait to visit personally. Um, I, I'll be there in November. Um, Iman, I, I'm I'm really excited to get to know you today. 
um, also loving the Batman background. Um, is this a big yeah, Batman thing? <laughs> no, 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 no. I have nothing to do with Batman. But I, I love Batman, but uh, there's nothing to do, to do with that. Uh, but uh, there's something going on uh, behind the, the screen, so that's uh, okay. why I put okay. this out. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Feel free to introduce yourself and let us know why you do and um, what you do. Could you also um, disclose where you are roughly in the world, just, you know, the nearest city or whatever, just so I can get a real sense of exactly where you are? Uh, I'm... I'm in uh, uh, in Palembang, uh, Palembang City, in like a okay. small small city in Indonesia. So very yeah, good. Okay, in, the, in there right now. So yeah, that's uh, mm -hmm. pretty much where I'm located right now. Okay, and and why do you do um, what you do in the Indonesian community? Uh, okay, yeah, I I, I I do what I do. What um, yeah, your question uh, before is, uh, is about. Uh, yeah, for the first time, I, I was, you know, getting into Bitcoin by accident, actually, because uh, when I was discovered, uh, you know, for the first time, Bitcoin, uh, actually, I, I was, you know, doing my thesis back then. But have you ever heard of like, maybe you, you don't know about it, because it's like uh, in Indonesia, there's like malware going on. It's called like one five virus. And then my scripty, uh, my 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 thesis got, uh, you know, um, uh, got the malware. So that's why I cannot like, you know, uh, continue my uh, thesis. That's why I, you know, uh, discover uh, a lot of Bitcoin because uh, the the malware itself, uh, you know, you need to pay Bitcoin to unlock the the malware. So that's why it, I, you know, got introduced uh, to no. Uh, I learned. I don't hard believe you, man. It's like a uh, blessing in disguise. You were orange pilled by malware. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, uh, it's like blessing in disguise. And then I uh, learned a lot of uh, Bitcoin back then. But uh, you know, like uh, for most people, I bought a top as well. But uh, during the bear market, I uh, still learn uh, about the uh, technology behind it, why Bitcoin matters, and not other than uh, you know other coins. So, and yeah, that's pretty much. And then uh, I'm building my YouTube channel and my own community uh, back in uh, late uh, 2020s when there's like a pandemic going on. And I see that, uh, you know, the it not really, you know, I already, uh, I, I supposedly uh, to do it earlier, right? But at the same time, uh, I cannot, you know, uh, uh, do it earlier because uh, I need to, you know, uh, fulfill my brain, right? In, in, in terms of like why it is matter and why, uh, it is like you know uh, good for some people, and then that's why uh, you know I learned uh, for uh, maybe uh, like two years, and then I you know uh, uh, I have uh, my uh, 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 I I brief enough to start a YouTube channel and uh, not really educate. I mean like uh, I also uh, you know have a debate uh, in my podcast. Uh, I also you know. Uh, you know, invited uh, a podcast from you know people who are not into Bitcoin and uh, yeah, have like a public debate, right? And uh, that's uh, what I'm doing. And um, what else? And then I also you know uh, come to city to city uh, just to you know uh, what's uh, their thoughts about Bitcoin. And then yeah, that's how the community naturally grows, right? Say because uh, you cannot like you know make a uh, the community uh, gather together uh, much faster, right? Uh, yeah, or maybe uh, if in terms of like bull market, uh, people will uh, follow follow that. But at the same time, uh, if uh, the uh, press action is still not the case, uh, still uh, hard to do the community. You know, that's why I keep doing what I'm doing. You know, mm -hmm. fantastic. I would love to hear a debate between you and. Uh, people that sell malware in Indonesia, just to talk about your experience and how you ended up learning about Bitcoin through this, yeah. this, this process. Um, I wanted to move on to a sort of new topic now that everyone's introduced each, each of themselves. I have an interest myself. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. You missed me sorry. here. Uh, my name is Lucas and uh, mm -hmm. I'm one of the uh, team from Go Bitcoin Fest. Uh, we uh, were a group of plebs and uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm in El Salvador right now, sitting here with Mike, and I've, I've been traveling for the past eight months, 18 countries, but also virtually traveling, meeting uh, Bitcoin communities uh, in over 
40 countries, I think, or 35 countries. Um, and what we, we're a community ourselves. Uh, basically, we're passionate about hearing about Bitcoiners in different countries. But we also uh, tend to end up to interview uh, Bitcoin communities uh, mm -hmm. or community organizers in different countries. So I know Herman. Uh, yeah, right. I know they are Eskita and Pratiwi and Iman that uh, we did the Indonesian uh, Global Bitcoin Fest space and um, uh, also talked to Mike the other day uh, about the exact details like on the ground you know how how to build a, a community so that's basically what we do uh, we're curious mm -hmm. and we travel uh, to interview community organizers yeah that's what we did sounds, sounds like a, not, a sweet gig like this. i think we're like 15 people doing this together but usually i'm one of two or three people that interview Fantastic. Um, I'm also really, really sorry there, Lucas, for the rug pull. I, I wasn't sure there <laughs> if, if you were coming in or not. And I'm very sorry about that. Um, okay, let's let's move on to um, a, a sort of a topic here that I want to touch on like, the importance of why you build in emerging markets. You know, you're not going to places like New York and London with these um, community building exercises. You specifically targeting emerging markets. Um, why and why is it important to build in emerging markets? Um, who would like to kick us off? I'll, I'll jump in there. I think the, the, the real reason that it's so much more obvious in emerging markets is because they don't have a banking system that works for them. You know, we like to, you know, in the U.S. complain about the banks or the fees, uh, but the reality is in general that they work. We're able to send transactions. We're able to connect. We have Venmo. We have Cash App. We have all these different um, choices as far as banking electronically or making mobile payments. For most of the developed world, they don't have that, or if they do, it's very limited. And a big reason for that is because of the regulatory environment, it's not worthwhile for companies to enter smaller markets because, especially if they're poorer markets, because there's not uh, a lot of profit to be made per person and the KYC AML requirements actually, you know, exceed what they could hope to make off these individuals. So that leaves the majority of the world without even any sense of modern banking tools. And so Bitcoin fixes all that because it's open source, because they don't have to get permission from anybody, because they can bypass all of that. It can bring anybody into that system. It doesn't matter if they have identification. It doesn't matter if they're 10 years old or 90 years old. They all have access to the same open source payment rails. And so that is, I think, the biggest reason that you're going to see Bitcoin come out of the emerging markets first, that that's where you're going to see these circular Bitcoin economies start because it's, it's harder when there's, when there's established players, when there's something that kind of works, people are creatures of habit. And so they're going to be less likely to change. But when you're in a place like El Salvador, where it's obvious the need for it, and you have people that have wanted to have access to these things and Bitcoin supplies that, that's why you're going to see it driving out of Latin America, Africa, uh, East Asia, the, the different developing markets. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I personally follow a project in Dakar in Senegal, which I visited in January, February this year, to interview the guys there. And then I've seen the progress over the past 10, 11 months. And it seems to really pick up and fly so much quicker in emerging markets too, because there's just that the underlying need for it. Um, how, how do you perceive that in Oman? Do, do you find there's some pushback sometimes? Do you find that people realize quite quickly, ah, we need Bitcoin here? Sorry, Herman, I was, I was targeting that at you, sorry. Uh, yeah, I just switched the mic off there. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's, it's been an interesting, interesting experience, uh, just on a personal level. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I can 100% 100 agree with, with what Mike's saying, because, you know, I've, I've, I've been sort of very quietly um, involved in Bitcoin for, for quite a long time. And I've always tried to, 
speak to family members and friends and so on about it and um, and and business clients and um, we've on, on a personal level I've been using it for for quite some time um, but it's it's always been like a very very much an, an an ideological conversation when I talk to new people about it because I was always dealing well mostly dealing with people at a sort of so, a similar socioeconomic level as as to what I was operating on um, and when when we started Bitcoin Ikasi, um, I did not expect this. Um, so it's, it's something new for me this last year was that the people who adopted this in, in the township where we operate um, have done so for very practical reasons. It's, it's, not, it's not been an ideological thing. Um, they don't care too much about the, about the ideology behind it. It's, it's, it's being adopted simply because it works better. Um, so it's not so much a case of going out into the community and orange pilling people. It's just simply going out and demonstrating what can you do with this. Um, and, and, and it really, it really does work better on, on a practical level compared to what, what they have available to them. Um, it's, it's not that the banking infrastructure in South Africa is not well developed. It, it is pretty well developed, um, compared to many other developing countries, but it's really expensive. Um, it's really expensive and for various reasons there's a general mistrust uh, amongst people um, in in banks in south africa it's one of the funniest things you'll you'll see if if, if you come here is that at, at the end of the month there are hundreds um hundreds of thousands potentially millions of people who have bank accounts but they only use it once a month and that's when when they get paid their salary and so at the end of every month wherever you go in the country you'll see these long lines outside cash machines and that's basically people withdrawing their entire salary in one go from the ATM. And so they're literally using their bank account once a month to get cash out for the rest of the month. They'll live on that cash um, and do the same thing again next month. So it's, it's, it's been interesting to see. It, it's been interesting to, 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 of, to, to deal with people on a practical level rather than to have these, you know, theoretical um, conversations with him and that's why I think Bitcoin is going to be adopted in in these types of situations faster um, than what it is being done in the first world um, because yeah people people will people will adopt this if they have no other choice um, you know as, as long as the banking system works for them why would they want to switch over to something else um, mm. it, it, it just doesn't really make sense um, Bitcoin was created because there's the potential that it's that 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 what we have is not going to work so mm. yeah and, and naturally Herman, uh, Herman sorry the carrying that cash around is naturally a risk right you withdraw your month's savings put that in your pocket you you know you're a target for for thieves like, straight away whereas bitcoin you know it's a lot it's a lot secure solution to those those sort of um situations let's jump to you lucas instead so i don't forget you at the end of this question um, what, what have you learned about um, emerging markets over the over the course of it did you say 15 countries you, you visited uh or 15 people to 18 countries where 15 mm -hmm. people in global bitcoin fest but global bitcoin fest has done over I, I think in total we've done closer to 50 countries but in the past um, eight months um, about 35 countries that we visited. So um, we don't only visit emerging markets. We've also done Andorra and uh, France and so on. But one thing that I'd like to mention is that maybe there's there's different community types as well, right? So there's the there's some communities that are mainly organized via Telegram or WhatsApp. Um, and then there's these communities like what uh, Mike and Herman are building, which are a small tight knit uh say villages right so the dynamics are very different and and um but i would i would generally agree that for example the most concrete uh twitter space so we're doing it on twitter spaces the most con concrete twitter space that we ever did was Ven uh, venezuela i mean they they had many years of very hands-on experience uh when they had to solve real problems with bitcoin um, so, uh, and, and also it's, it's quite clear that, uh, Bitcoin beach started a trend. So for the past 10 months, 12 months, there's been a lot of, uh, beaches or small communities popping up all over the world. The most recent ones I think is 
Vietnam just last week and uh, Philippines a couple of weeks ago and Boracay. So mm-hmm. they're, they're just coming more and more and more of these communities. Um, and usually they're in uh, emerging markets, maybe because there's better beaches there. I don't know if people want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. There's a... <laughs> And write yourself, Iman, um, why is it important to do this in Indonesia? You know, it's just a part, uh, sorry, could you repeat again? Yes, yeah, so why is it important to build a community around Bitcoin in Indonesia? Yeah, I think the community right now is uh, getting you know bigger and bigger, but at the same time, uh, uh, like uh, Herman said before, uh, there is no urgent need, you know, in terms of like adoption because uh, the system is uh, still, you know, even though like, you know, it's a little bit shaky right now, but uh, uh, it's, uh, I would say like uh, they don't care because the system uh, still work that way. So that's uh, that's the first. And the second thing that uh, I find out that Bitcoin is, you know, uh, slowly getting adopted is because there is some cases back then uh, when you know PayPal got banned in Indonesia, maybe like temporarily, but uh, it's uh, like a quite uh, banned, uh, so to say. But uh, yeah, people don't care. Uh, the money can take it away from the government, and that's why it's uh, better to uh, find a solution, which is the Bitcoin, right? So that's why it's. Uh, uh, but uh, not uh, every one of them uh, is still, you know. Uh, uh learning about this but uh the the awareness is still there you know because uh, uh there is like a problem in the past and uh that's why you know i need to prevent it in the future right so that's uh you know the community uh, right now is uh, uh getting stronger i think but I, I don't have any particular uh data that shows that uh you know uh the adoption uh, in indonesia uh currently but I would say, uh, based on like, you know, you mentioned before about the Telegram group on uh, Bitcoin Indonesia in the bad stage. Uh, I think it's quite clear that uh, people is interested uh, in Bitcoin, but uh, only a matter of time before uh, it takes off. Yes. So uh, that's pretty much what I would say. Okay. Let me try a different um, way of phrasing it then. Because for me personally i'm still the weirdo that talks about bitcoin to my family and friends and everyone's like oh yeah he's like he's like the bitcoin guy guy doing his bitcoin thing are you considered like this in your like personal community with your family and friends or are you able to talk about bitcoin openly and honestly with them where are you on this sort of scale oh me or yeah yeah you are oh, okay. <laughs> yeah um yeah this is something that uh, you mean like orange peel right uh, that's why it's like uh, to get uh, you know uh, mass adoption uh, you know uh, mass adoption uh, getting faster i think uh, you you need to like uh, you know like drugs right i mean uh, you need to give away your sats uh, or something like that uh, the telegram is still happening right now but uh, i i don't like because it's still in for like price action right because uh, price action is just too volatile uh, that's why I cannot like, you know, uh, uh, directly uh, say that to everyone that, oh, you, you, you should buy Bitcoin, uh, you should all in, you should all of that. But uh, what, I, what I can do is that, you know, to give like, uh, you know, both perspective, you know, uh, from the pros and cons, right? Because uh, Bitcoin is basically a freedom and freedom is information is still uh, need to be taken places, right? So. That's why it's uh, for me uh, personally. Uh, I I, uh, I still you know I uh, cannot encourage uh, people like to do like all in. The, yeah, even though like that's good because uh, it's uh, like the uh, mass adoption. Uh, you know uh, when you talk so, uh, in terms of that. But at the same time, it's uh, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, please uh, you know uh, get into it uh, first uh, before you yeah. making any decision. Right. So. Uh, that's uh, my personal opinion, you know. Okay. Okay. No, great advice to absolutely get educated before you go all in. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, let, let's move on to barriers and sort of challenges that you hit when trying to forge these communities. Um, do you think they differ in the way that, uh, say, building a community up in a, a Paris or a, or a Berlin would differ to how you do it in an emerging market? Um, what, what are the common barriers that you come across? Let's start with um lucas 
you look very thoughtful over there. Yeah. Um, um, I'm still thinking actually, what, what are the differences? I, you mentioned Paris or France specifically, and it's quite interesting. They actually had to reset their community recently because it got completely invaded by um, shit coiners. I don't know if it's okay no. to say. Uh, um, maybe uh, I should use a different word, but basically they got invaded <laughs> and all the, all the Bitcoiners, um, they, they fled <laughs> to a secret new spot <laughs> in Paris. <laughs> don't dox them, don't and dox they them. Did, they didn't tell the people, <laughs> they just <laughs> like, brought the Bitcoiners because they got so sapped on energy. Um, that, and I think that's one of the things that um, I've seen in common in community building that it's really important to keep it to Bitcoin because the Bitcoiners get really bored when um, all the old coiners go crazy with um, their conversations. Um, uh, they just can't stand it and they, they leave and then the Bitcoin part dies. Um, so, um, but the difference between emerging markets and uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you have a perspective of this, Mike, or yeah. Yeah, or more more in general, sort of the barriers you come across. But just on that point about you know when shitcoiners invade uh, Bitcoin spaces, it is it, it that does happen, and like you know it happens at conferences too. And you start talking, you're like, ah oh, no, you're about to sell me your shitcoin, aren't you? And you're like, come on, like this is supposed to be a Bitcoin space, <laughs> please let's keep it, you know, keep it PG, keep it Bitcoin. <laughs> um, Mike, <laughs> why don't you pick up the thread there? Well, well, it's just just to touch on that. It's funny because it's always in that direction. You don't see Bitcoiners going to the Ethereum conferences or you know trying to break into those groups. But it's always whenever you try to do something that Bitcoin only, it's you know it's inevitable they start streaming in, and so they they want to ride on the coattails of it. So I, I don't know. I don't know if we'll solve that issue, but. It's definitely something that we need to be careful of because you know, then a lot of scams come in and it, a lot of people start to associate that with Bitcoin. And so we've seen that in El Salvador that they start thinking, oh, this person's talking about Bitcoin. So this is the same thing as Bitcoin Beach. And, you know, then they're buying some, you know, coin that, you know, you never even heard of before that, that they're sometimes they're not even actually on a blockchain, but they convince them, no, this is the same as Bitcoin, but you're getting it for cheaper. And so um, I, I think as, as far as the difference between a developing market and developed markets, I, in places like El Salvador, there's just so many practical use cases uh, for small hotels or hostels. In the past, they could never take any reservations because they weren't qualified to accept credit cards. And so if they had somebody from overseas that you know, wanted to make a reservation, they didn't have a way to do that. And so they lost a lot of those customers because people coming in wanted to make sure they had a room secured so they would go with the bigger hotel that they could reserve a room with a credit card. Now these small businesses that don't qualify to take credit cards can say, yeah, just send me some Bitcoin, send me, you know, 10,000 sats or $10 worth of Bitcoin as a deposit for your room and we'll hold it for you. And that's something that is a much bigger need in the developing world than in the U.S. In the U.S., most hotels or small businesses, they're all going to take credit cards. So you extrapolate that over all the different um, opportunities and businesses, the fact that most people here don't have cars. And so just banking becomes a all day chore and expensive. They have to pay to get on the bus. They have to sit on the bus for a couple hours. They have to get in line. And that's unproductive use of their time. And so I, there's so many more ways that, that Bitcoin, I think, is actually more advantageous in the developing world. Obviously, I think Bitcoin's the best money, and I think it's, everybody should be using it. And even in places in the U.S., it's it's going to usurp the banking system. But I just think it's more obvious in the developing markets because of all of the logistical advantages that it gives people that are still doing things the way that they were doing it. 30, 40 years ago, this allows them to kind of leapfrog 
and actually be doing things more efficiently than people are in the US. I mean, even when I have to send the wire in the US, we've, we've had to do that to buy vehicles, some different things. You go in the bank, you wait there, you get somebody, they've never done the wire, an international wire before, you go through all the steps with them, you pay your $35, and then you wait for it to get flagged because you're sending it to some country that's not on their you know, white list. And then you have to go back in and get it cleared. And then you hope that within a week, it's actually made it. And you're just banging your head against the wall saying, how in the world in 2022, is this how we send money in the developed, supposedly developed world? It's just crazy. It's like if, if we were trying to send a picture to somebody that we would take this picture and then go get it developed and then put it in a, you know, have a pigeon carry it to them. And so I think that it's just going to become obvious to everybody over the next decade that the banks, the, the system as it is now can't compete, but that's first going to come in the developing world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the pigeon might even be quicker, right? Um, on the, on the note about, you know, these, uh, I mean, has there been anything that surprised you, like an unintended consequence of adopting Bitcoin adoption? I know you mentioned the lines there, you know, in the banks, presumably they've gone down somewhat. But is there anything being like, wow, I didn't realize that Bitcoin would have this knock on effect in the community? And like, as I mentioned earlier, what we saw with with education and just the youth that before it was hard to get them to understand that that, you know, sacrificing now was worth it to continue the education so that they could have a more fulfilling and better paying job in the future. But mm -hmm. once they're introduced to Bitcoin, they really start considering opportunity costs. They start thinking about their time preferences and that bleeds over into all the areas of their life, even, even into the health and the way they eat. A lot of times you start to see that slowly over time. Um, so I think I, I really underestimated all those things. I, you know, I, I could sit here and say, oh, that was our plan. But no, I was not thinking about that at all. And I was just kind of shocked as I saw this. I was like, wait, these young people didn't care about these things at all before. Why do all of a sudden do they care about it? And I'm like, oh, we're seeing the same thing over here and the same thing over here. What's the common denominator? They've been introduced to Bitcoin. They're actually starting to think about the their time preferences. And that is, I think, when the history books, you know, kind of re recount what happened in El Salvador 20 years from now, they're gonna talk about this huge cultural shift that came at the same time that Bitcoin was adopted. Now, whether or not they mm. actually, you know, give the credit to it for Bitcoin adoption for being the thing that spurred that, we'll have to see but it will be that kind of breaking point where the culture really shifted. Wow, yeah, it's sort of behavioral change. I'm really curious to hear what Herman says on that because he's working with kids as well, right? Uh, have you seen a similar trend? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been interesting. Um, I think, I think the interesting thing about South Africa is that you've got an incredibly um, unequal society in terms of uh, socioeconomic levels. Um, so I've kind of got two feet, um, one one foot stuck in stuck in both camps. I mean, I come from a relatively uh, privileged background. Um, you know, my, my my family would be considered the top one percent in the country, and then I've, I'm working in this community that is, you know, as as poor as you can possibly get. Um, and so it's, it's interesting to see the different hurdles to adoption um, in, in different circumstances. And it's, it's been easier to get Bitcoin adopted um, in, the, in the more desperate circumstance where people don't really have a, 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 a viable alternative. But as, as, far as, the kids, as far as the kids go, I think the biggest change I've seen has been in, in the coaches um, that are getting paid in Bitcoin. Um, you know, there's... As, as far as I could tell, there wasn't really much of an incentive uh, to save money um, until, they, until they started earning in Bitcoin. Um, and, 
you know, I think it's, I think, I think the most interesting thing has, has for them has, has been to see, you know, the, the, the sort of the value of this, of this asset going up or down. And it's quite volatile, but in a way that volatility has been a good thing because it's made them question um, the nature of value. Like where does value come from and what, what is it that gives something value to begin with? Um, you know, whereas before they would just earn their money and then go and spend it. Now they would think about like, yeah, but this, why is it valuable and what will its value be in the future? And, um, particularly the more senior coaches, um, they've 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 started saving, um, which has been really encouraging to see. Um, you know, with with the kids, I guess the change, um, the, I guess the change that I've seen there, it, it's been very subtle. Um, but we've got we've got kids spending um, some rewards on a weekly basis, and I'd say about about half of them at the moment aren't buying crap anymore like in the beginning they would all buy crap you know we'd give them like a dollar uh, maybe a dollar and a half worth of bitcoin per week and and they'd literally go out and buy just you know just absolute crap um and slowly but do you, surely do you mean food here more, yeah yeah like food like okay. you know crisps and sweets and just just like you know the, junk the food, kind of yeah. thing where you yeah junk food i mean not even junk food like worse i mean the the kind of thing that you turn around and the ingredients list is just a bunch of numbers. Like there, there is no ingredient. It's just, it's just chemicals. <laughs> um, you know, um, like the cheapest, the cheapest stuff that you can imagine. And, and slowly but surely, some of them have been buying things that you could see this is going to go home. Like, um, you know, bread or, um, or, or, or sausages or, or whatever. And it's, it's curious because we don't, I mean, I've, I've been, I wasn't so sure about giving kids Bitcoin to begin with. Um, I've been very careful because it's, you know, when, once you introduce money into that relationship, it, it, it changes the dynamics. We've always given the kids the support, like we've given them food, we've given them the equipment that they need to train, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I was a little bit hesitant at first, but it's been an interesting experiment. Um, and when we did this, I was very adamant that we shouldn't tell the kids what to buy. Like they should decide for themselves. And um, yeah, it's it's been interesting to see. And it's also it's also interesting to watch which which kids are are deciding um, to to start buying you know more productive things. And it's generally the kids who start buying bread and sausages as opposed to crap. Um, they tend to do that week after week. Um, and um, yeah, it's also it's also really cool to post those videos on Twitter because it's it it it's giving these kids like this little platform, you know. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have, have, join Bitcoin. Herman, have you noticed any? Uh, have you noticed any change in the educational components of what you guys are doing since you introduced Bitcoin? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, again, I think the biggest change has been with the junior coaches. Um, I, I guess yeah. That there's there's one in particular that's quite an interesting story. Um, uh, earlier this year, I started asking asking him. Uh, his name is Lukongele. He's he's um, seven seventeen. Uh, he's I've 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 known him since he was ten years old. Uh, we recruited him in the program about yeah about seven years ago. So I've watched this kid grow up um, and. You know, it's, it's sort of like at this crucial stage now where he's a teenager and it's touch and go, you know, because there's the gangs and the drugs and that sort of thing is a bigger, it's a bigger, it's a bigger threat now to him than it's ever been before. And it's probably, it's probably at, at, at the most critical stage that it ever will be. Um, and earlier this year, I, I you know, I, I started noticing because he's also earning, earning a small salary in Bitcoin. Um, and I've asked him to, to, to take over the, the Twitter account of the Surfer Kids, and so he's the one managing the Surfer Kids Twitter account, and it's just like to to see him for the first time ever jump headfirst into this thing, and it's really taking it on. Um, he's even started writing blog posts and stuff, and it's 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 interesting to see because it's it's something that's way above his level of of, of ability. He he isn't really. He isn't really skilled enough, but he's 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 taking it on despite that, and it's it's to see that level of sort of, I don't know if courage is the right word, but it's it it's all it almost seems courageous in a way, um, 
and it's not something i mean i can't say for sure that 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 bitcoin is the thing that changed this but it's not something that i've seen before so compared to compared to before i've i've dealt with junior coaches at that age before i've dealt with them at that critical stage where drugs and gangs and that sort of thing really can ruin their life and i've seen it happen where it does ruin their life like i've had kids before that have been with us for you know seven eight years and then they get to teenage years and they just they, they 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 lose the plot and this time around this 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 coach is is also at that stage and he's not losing the plot it seems like he's heading in the right direction and i've not seen that before um and i've i've in the past i've asked myself the question like what are we doing wrong why are we losing these coaches you know we we, we, we give them everything we can and then they get to the teenage years and then they just they just head off in the wrong direction what are we doing wrong and and it's 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 very encouraging to see that now they 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 seem to be sticking around. And I, I can't say for sure that it is Bitcoin that's changed that, but that's the only thing that we've changed really. We haven't changed anything else about the program. So yeah. If this was a panel, a live panel, there would be a, a round of applause after this uh, comment, just uh, just so you're aware. It's uh, you know, it's it's really powerful stuff. And you know, Luke and Yaley as a name is story. You know, these are the sorts of things that in 10 years, 15 years time, I hope you're all keeping, you know, records or memoirs of all these experiences you're going through because they're going to make some fantastic books as well later to look back on and to, you know, track this uh, adoption around the world. Um, Iman, how about yourself? Have you, have you encountered any unintended consequences as that's sort of what the question has morphed into from um, promoting Bitcoin education in your community? Not really, because uh, people still have no idea what it's all about, right? But uh, at the same time, uh, uh, the government make it clear, you cannot like use the Bitcoin, but uh, you can only use it as a commodity, not as a uh, payment, you know, uh, remittance, you know, I mean, like, uh, you cannot transact with Bitcoin. So, yeah, it's like unsterable because, you know, like the government, right? So. And then you cannot um, transact that. But uh, the challenges for me uh, itself is to, you know, um, uh, how not not really in, in the people, you know, but uh, uh, what um, make uh, this uh, Bitcoin thing resonate with them, right? I mean, uh, it, because uh, like uh, uh, Herman said before, it's uh, still uh, hard to you know, find the use case of Bitcoin. So what's the point, right? If the system is still, uh, you know, works that way, right? So yeah, that's why I find a way, uh, you know, um, other than, you know, uh, by giving away that the thoughts or maybe that's something quite attractive. I also like uh, create memes, you know, I mean, that's what, <laughs> uh, you know, get uh, into people uh, into Bitcoin. And also I, I interview a lot of people uh, what uh, their thoughts are uh, about Bitcoin because uh, sometimes uh, people need to get you know uh, some closure about Bitcoin in terms of like uh, personal personal uh, in person you know so that's uh, you know pretty much uh, I I've been doing that, so memes are powerful you know they are yeah, a very absolutely. useful like, tool in this well this one said that uh, who controls the meat controls the universe you know? <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, we're going to the last 10 minutes, guys. So I, I wanted to, I'm, I'm hoping there's people watching around the world that are thinking, man, I want to do this in my community. Like, how can I build a Bitcoin beach in, you know, down the road in, in Switzerland where the sun is now finally uh, coming up? Um, what advice would you give them? You know, what are the things you've learned and you thought, you know, this might help someone build this Bitcoin community out in the, in the place that they're in around the world? I started with the OG, Mike. What, what advice would you give to someone building out a Bitcoin community? First, you need to be using Lightning um, for, for people to be transacting and to build a circular economy. It really needs to be built on Lightning. And so there's there's a number of, of great um, user-friendly Lightning wallets that are out there now. And you also need to get people transacting. So I always encourage people, don't go overboard on the descriptions before you have them do their first transaction. Because if you try to you know, go into the history of Bitcoin and, and all the technical you know, specifics of it, a lot of times they'll just kind of get bored with it and you know, they'll, they'll try to be polite, but the, you know, their, their interest will wane. But if you get them making that first transaction and they see how easy it is and that they've actually sent value from one person to another 
in like a second's time for hardly, you know, almost no fees. That's what the light bulb goes off and they realize that, you know, the value that that has. And so get them transacting and then let them drive the education by their own initiative. The more they start using it, they'll actually want to start listening to podcasts and watching videos and, and asking you for recommendations for books. So yeah, that's my, my one thing I would point to is get them transacting. Lead with lightning. I like that. That's, that's, that's smart. And it's that visualization thing as well. When they first receive their first sacks, they're like, oh, wow, it's, just, it's as easy as that, right? Exactly. Um, um, what do you think, Herman? Um, no, I think, I think a good place to start is, um, is to start with, with, with something that's, that's pre-existing. Um, that's, that's, that's what worked for us in, in, in this situation is that we had a, we had a, a platform to use. We had something that, that was already existing and we, we, we built the Bitcoin community on top of that. Uh, we didn't start, start the community from scratch. And I mean, I, I guess in different circumstances, it's going to be different. I mean, I guess, I guess the best thing to do is just to start <laughs> and see how it goes. Um, you know, just put the fur, put the one foot in front of the other one and, and, and start going. But I would definitely, I would definitely suggest keeping it Bitcoin only um, simply because there's so much distraction that comes in when you start involving other stuff. Um, and it's just, it, it, yeah, that's, I, I think that's one of, I mean, I, I never, I never actually used to consider myself a Bitcoin maximalist until I started this project. Uh, this project turned me into a Bitcoin maximalist because as soon as I started this, I mean, I'd, I've been watching, I'm, I was I was actually quite enthusiastic when Ethereum launched in 2014. I'd been into Bitcoin for a while then and I watched Ethereum launch and I was like, wow, this is interesting. Look, like there's different things that you can do, yada, yada, yada. And then I, I never never considered myself a Bitcoin maximalist. And then when, when we started this project, I just, just, the, just the amount of, yeah, I mean, but there's no other word for it. The, the, the amount of shit coinery that started getting thrown at us with people coming with this idea and that idea. We want to do this. We want to do that. And I was like, oh, no, oh, hang on. This is just like, really, guys, um, it's just too much. And 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 most of it is just I, I wouldn't say most of it was 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 scams. But but, you know, it, it, most of it was at, at best completely misguided. Like, I mean, I watched the video again last night of somebody who's, you know, trying to launch a new governance structure for a local municipality in South Africa, and they want to do it with a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. And I'm like, yeah, guy, but, but the guy, like he's talking about stuff that he doesn't even really properly understand, but he's throwing all these buzzwords in there, you know, blockchain, this blockchain, that, and it's, and, 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 and that sort of thing is what really drove me to a point of Bitcoin maximalism, big, simply because I had to focus my attention. Like if, if you're not, I, I kind of feel like that's probably what I would suggest the, the advice coming, coming from our side is like, you've got to focus your attention. And because if you're not focused, you spread your attention out too thin and you can't actually accomplish anything. It's like trying to do a hundred things at the same time. You're not going to do anything. You might get something done if you focus on one thing and do that properly. Um, and so, you know, focusing on Bitcoin only is going to do that. You're going to do one thing and you're going to do it properly. Um, there's no point trying to do trying to do a hundred things at the same time because yeah, you're, you're not, not going to get anything done. So I would say 100% focus on Bitcoin only. Um, and if there was something better than Bitcoin out there, then that's what you should focus on. But at the moment, Bitcoin is where it's at. Um, there's just no way that there's anything else that's going to compete with Bitcoin um, at, at this stage and at, 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 at this time. So, yeah. Nice, nice. It's just fascinating. Just to jump in there this. real real quick. Right, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to, to follow up when he was saying focus on one thing. I think that also um, is, is true for geography. You see a lot of these projects are like, oh, I'm going to get one store using Bitcoin here and then 10 miles away. We'll get them to use Bitcoin, but that does not create a Bitcoin circular economy. That doesn't make Bitcoin start flowing from one business to the employees to another business. So focusing on a really compact geography now that if you're in a small village, obviously that, that works very nicely, but it can also be a specific neighborhood. It's much better to have 
five stores in the same neighborhood accepting Bitcoin than 50 stores spread out over a huge city. Because for people to actually want to use it and to take the time to understand it, there has to be enough of a network effect there. And so start small. I, I'd like to Thanks, chime in. Um, it's a different angle, on, on, but, but similar. So I think some, sometimes people think that more is better and they're like, okay, I'm going to convince a lot of people. Um, and they forget that they need a team. <laughs> they need to be a group people that works together. It's very lonely if you're alone and you're trying to do it. You need to have a team of people that have a similar idea uh, because, and, and I think that's also related to what Herman said, you need, it's, it's better maybe if you have a pre-existing platform, well, that team uh, will be the platform. So if you don't have a team, maybe you should start trying to find your first uh, maxi friends that want to do this project together uh, before you run out and try to give away sats to random people because uh, you may get quite tired doing it alone I think um, yeah I know that's very much so from personal experience trying to give out sats to random people um, that's a really important point about the, the geography yeah. there as well like and it's it's a, it's a conversation that, that I've had recently with two guys in Zimbabwe they want to kickstart and alexandra there he he wanted to do it but he was alone and now he found metamorphosis a guy another great maxi and now they're forming a team and like the energy is completely different anyways that was it i mean love it fantastic I iman what what advice would you give how, how would you orange pill communities do you, do you give them all malware is this how it works and uh, no, it's, that's uh, personally for me, you know, but uh, not for everyone. Uh, but then, I'm just teasing. Yeah, that's uh, when I started getting into Bitcoin. But what, what I do with my community, you know, uh, I, like I said before, I'm, uh, you know, person to person uh, talking about Bitcoin. And also I invited uh, not Bitcoin on my podcast because I, my background is also like a political science. And, uh, and also like uh, I have uh, my marketing uh, experience uh, you cannot onboard new people with new people you know uh, there is like a swing water right that's why we need to gather the uh, uh, maybe like nft people or yeah or something that's why i I'm, I'm doing it uh, maybe uh, some people say like uh, herman said before you cannot focus on all thing but uh, uh, we need like a control opposition you know like a po politician right so that's why i i am here to not uh, being like uh, myself getting into that, but uh, what I'm saying, you know, to uh, capture the the uh, funneling the the audience, you know, because uh, you know uh, back then when I was in marketing, there's like uh, always the funneling in the in the channel, right? And uh, that's why I uh, really you know, learn a lot and to convince, not really convince, I mean to encourage uh, the people to, from uh, switching, you know, uh, to uh, Bitcoin. So. Yeah, that's what, what I do so far, and that's been good. And then, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Okay, so did you, did you, uh, I didn't quite understand, so I wasn't quite following. Is, did you say start with politicians or sort of go for like leaders in the community? I mean, like, it's like uh, when uh, Bitcoin is, uh, there is like certain power in Bitcoin and, and uh, there's like community in there. And what I'm saying is that uh, when you support something, it tends to like, uh, you know, uh, get to a political, right? You know what I'm saying? And then that's why uh, you get uh, captured to uh, another, uh, like, swing photo. I mean, uh, from this uh, coin to Bitcoin. You know what I'm saying? To, uh, like I said, uh, what, what is called in English? But it, especially like uh, orange pill, but in uh, in encouraging way, you know? Uh, because in Indonesia, I have a culture of, like, encouraging or something that's why it's the you know of being i know i understand I completely understand of being toxic basibalis you know like <laughs> everyone but i mean just i'm, I'm uh, confused in the uh yeah in that way you know so no i, I think i get it yeah en encouragement enthusiasm you know lead with kindness rather than toxicity which yeah no one supports yeah, that well, I, I love it not, you know because that that's uh, what we've been doing you know with the uh, basically, in the uh, past election, right when, yeah, I know there's like uh, political. I don't, I don't want to get political, 
But uh, you know, the swing voter is still there, right? And you know, people who get more maybe into NFT, they have no idea. And that's the people we need to encourage to Bitcoin, right? So yeah, that's what I've been doing, and I understand completely the map, uh, the audience. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, pretty much about it. Yeah, no, precisely, precisely. This is awesome. I'm going to do a little cheat sheet for anyone that's watching at home that wants to just get the quick answers what your um the advice was and sort of summary of the panel so far so mike is get people transacting start small focus on a smaller geography um lucas find some friends you know get yourself a nice team together assemble that avengers that's gonna the bitcoin avengers that can go around and start uh, getting that circular economy kicking on and then herman take advantage of existing communities start keep it bitcoin only and, uh, you know, the interesting quip about you becoming a Bitcoin maximalist through, uh, uh, you know, starting this Bitcoin community, I just think is also just quite, uh, quite fascinating. And then with the man, yeah, keep the energy high, um, keep enthusiastic. And uh, it, at one point it might become political, but that's OK. You know, we need to we need to win those people over as well. Um, before I sort of round up everything, um, would you be able to shout out your various communities? Just I want to take advantage of this platform, which the Indonesia Bitcoin Conference has very kindly giving, given us today. But just to talk about where you can follow your communities, where you can follow you guys specifically, um, so that we can keep the conversation going. Uh, fire, fire away, Mike. Yeah, we're here at Bitcoin Beach in El Salvador. Uh, we're very active on Twitter, uh, at Bitcoin Beach. And we're just getting ready to launch a, a new podcast series that's going to be interviewing Bitcoiners that travel to, to Bitcoin Beach has become kind of like the Mecca for, for Bitcoiners. So we're going to be interviewing Bitcoiners here. And then also as part of that series, um, just sharing about life in El Salvador, because there's so many people from all over the world now moving to El Salvador. So we're going to be you know, just talking about the practical things, buying property, cars, those sorts of things. Amazing. And just look at that studio. You know? This is where the podcast will happen. Yep, exactly. Always with a beer in hand. I love it. Okay. Uh, Lucas, sh shout out. And where can we follow you for more? At uh, Global BTC Fest, Global Bitcoin Fest, um, cloud-based community to travel like a lonely planet across different Bitcoin maxi communities around the world. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, Herman. Uh, yeah, we also, we're pretty active on Twitter. Um, it's, uh, the handle is at Bitcoin um, and the, uh, the organization that we're based on is at the Surfer Kids. Uh, so those two accounts are, are pretty active on Twitter and we, we post quite a lot of updates there. We try and post videos to give people a sense of, of what's going on. Um, I realize South Africa is very far out of the way. It's a, it's a hell of a flight to get here, no matter where you're coming from. So um, we try and we try and post as much as possible to give people a sense of of what it's like. Hey, you missed one. You missed um, the surf. I'm I, I'm going to come on a holiday with you guys next year with my girlfriend to the the surf community thing, where you also visit Bitcoin Akazi. What's it called? Oh, yeah, uh, that's... Travel surf. Yeah, that's at, at Unravel Surf. Um, it's okay. uh, that that that's the business that we that we've uh, that we've been running for a while, um, doing surf trips. But yeah, I look forward to seeing you, man. <laughs> some some yeah, awesome exactly. uncrowded surf here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And finally, Iman, wh where can we follow you to to find out more about the Indian the budding Indonesia Bitcoin community? Yeah, shout out to uh, Indonesia Bitcoin community, uh, IDBC. Who's been, you know, uh, helped this uh, conference? So, uh, yeah, uh, right now I I feel like, yeah, that's uh, IDBC is, uh, you know, doing a, a good job. And the second one, I would like to shout out to the Bitcoiners all over the world to make this possible because without uh, without them uh, i think yeah that's what makes uh, it stronger i mean the, the community around the globe in particular because uh indonesia um uh, still uh, there's uh, no um, it's still uh, the adoption still going on still but uh, at the same time so it's uh, uh it, it's not as big as in the as a globally you know that's why it's uh, uh, it's good to have you guys in here Thank you. That's, that's kind of you to say, man. And yeah, um, a big thanks to Bitcoin 
Indonesia Bitcoin Conference for hosting us all today. I, I look forward to meeting you all in person at some point or just hanging out again. Um, yeah, Joseph, I, I don't have any instructions. Are you to round coming it all to off. Joseph? Are you coming to adopting Bitcoin in El Salvador? Yes, sir. I'll see you there. See, see you here at, at adopting Bitcoin. Yes, that's yeah. another, another important shout out. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, gents, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time this morning. I am going straight to uh, get a coffee by the lake here. I'm going to pay with sats at the McDonald's. So, you know, it's a, a great way to start the day. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you all soon. I don't have any instructions to round this off here. So I think I'm just going to, do I, do I leave or do what do I do?